Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal, and just recently we got a brand new update for some of the dungeon changes coming to the War Within Season 1 Mythic Plus content. This includes an addition of 4 new affixes, but also a retirement of 6 affixes, with things such as Spiteful, Incorporeal, Afflicted, Entangling, Storming, and Volcanic all going away, but replaced with new affixes such as Reckless, Thorned, Attuned, and Focused. Instead of giving you affixes that add new mechanical ways of how you could experience dungeon fights and trash bags, instead these affixes are going to be empowering certain enemies, casters or melee, with a bit of a curse and a kiss element, where yes enemies are grown stronger, but now they will take additional damage from certain sources, such as physical damage, bleed damage, arcane damage, shadow, holy, and all the other magical elements. So for today's video, I wanted to do an entire overview of all of the major Season 1 Mythic Plus changes that are going to be available for testing this weekend in the War Within beta. Right before that though, if you guys enjoyed regular beta updates as well as class updates, be sure to follow the channel, otherwise let's dive right into this dungeon update. So when going over this blue post, I'm going to go over in the order that they have all the different parts listed. As part of this announcement, they also mentioned that they're going to be doing more raid testing starting this week, which likely means during the weekend we'll get a little bit more of potentially Mythic Plus testing on top of it. As for the Mythic Plus aspects of this article, I am personally a big fan of M+. I find it one of the better systems they've ever implemented, giving dungeons a reasonable way to be part of the endgame system. And putting together a group of 5 players is much easier than putting a group together of 15 or 20 players for a raid. And I'm a big fan of playing multiple alts and pushing mythic plus where aoe content and single target can both kind of blend all together and i'm very excited the mythic plus and the war within are continuing to see additional changes but i will primarily focus on some of the more important highlights of this article Starting off, War Within is going to get some generalized dungeon changes, though these changes are not necessarily new. A lot of these changes have already been implemented for the Season 4 of Dragonflight. This primarily highlights some of the dungeon difficulties, but also some of the rewards that can be maintained from these dungeons. Where normal dungeons, for the most part, are not seeing a lot of changes. Where we do see additional changes is in the heroics, all in terms of the damage that all the abilities are going to deal but also in terms of the reward structure of these dungeons, which are being upgraded. Where you're not necessarily going to be seeing more mechanics like you would in Mythic Plus, but everything is going to hit a lot harder, and you'll still be able to queue for heroic dungeons randomly with other players through the dungeon queue system. For Mythic Zero dungeons, things are going to get a little bit more difficult. You are going to be seeing some Mythic specific mechanics in the Mythic Zero content, which are meant to be a challenging bit of 5 min content, but without the Mythic Plus system of affix and timers of the Mythic Plus dungeons, but also offering players with much better rewards for completing Mythic Zeros, which are equivalent to normal raid gear awarded with champion track loot, which can actually be some of your better end game items. And from there we have the Mythic Plus system, which isn't available for us to really test out or do anything with currently over on the beta. But it'll be basically the same as what we have right now on the Live Realms of Dragonflight, where the difficulty starts at a plus 2, but it kind of feels like the original plus 12. And the new version of plus 10s feel kind of like the same difficulty of the old plus 20s, offering bigger challenges but also better gear. They also gave us a list of all dungeons that will be available for the first season of The War Within. And very similar to Dragonflight, they're going to implore a similar method of taking a portion of The War Within dungeons and adding them as part of the Season 1 content. So the content that's available for the first season of Mythic Plus dungeons will be dungeons such as the Stone Vault, the Dungeon of the Dawnbreaker, which is a dragon riding or a sky riding dungeon that has a little bit of flying involved, as well as the two Nerubian dungeons from the Arakara, the City of Echoes, as well as the City of Threads, which has a little espionage minigame attached to it. The other four dungeons that are going to be available for the Season 1 are going to be the non-expansion dungeons, which is a similar trend that we've seen in Dragonflight Season 1, 2, and 3. Those dungeons are going to be things like Grim Batal, which has been adjusted with some of the boss models and some of the enemy models upgraded for some of the more fresher content. But also the dungeons themselves and the actual mechanics of the dungeons are going to be a little bit different also. Besides Grim Atoll, we also get two Shadowlands dungeons as part of the season. These are going to be things such as Necrotic Wake. But a second dungeon from Shadowlands also gets to join us, which is the Mist of Tiranasai, which has the same maze minigame that you need to do before you can fight the Mistcaller second boss encounter. 
The final dungeon of that season is going to be one from Battle for Azeroth, and that is going to be the dungeon of Siege of Baralis, which is one of the lesser enjoyed dungeons except for the final season of Battle for Azeroth, where you could skip a lot of the encounters and choose your battles a little bit more evenly. Although hopefully this one will get a bit of tuning because I remember the final boss of Siege of Baralis being quite a hassle during tyrannical weeks. Besides this, we also are seeing some changes to the actual Mythic Plus system of the season, where dungeons at plus two or above will have the fortified and tyrannical affixes involved, though they are looking for feedback as to how they could adjust fortified and tyrannical in order to make them a little bit more balanced against one another, because certain bosses and certain dungeons can feel much worse than tyrannical or fortified. Dungeon difficulty of plus four and above will add a brand new array of affixes, which are going to be more passive affixes that don't necessarily add more difficulty, but really change how certain enemies will interact within these dungeons. And any dungeon above plus seven difficulty will add a second array of affixes, which will be some of the more notably difficult dungeon affixes that most of us will be familiar to if you've played over the last few expansions. Now, their goals with affixes in particular is to do a handful of things, with the blue post recognizing that one, they want to minimize the mechanical overlaps between dungeons and affixes. They also look to shift the source of the challenge from affixes and dungeons to the creatures in these dungeons rather than the affixes themselves, which will hopefully reduce the cognitive load that a player needs to be able to deal with some of the trash mechanics and the affixes at the same time, and also they want to allow for varied and context specific gameplay decisions when it comes to players outfitting their characters with different talents. Certain affixes will also offer a bit of a kiss and a curse mechanic to it, as in these affixes are meant to make the dungeons more challenging and more threatening, but they also wish to reward players for certain decisions being made, or if players maybe switch between one damage profile of the class to another, players are meant to be rewarded for certain specific changes in order to make adjustments for these dungeons. And with that, they also provided us the list of all those four affixes that they wish to introduce as some of the plus four affixes being added for this new season. The first one being Reckless, which will only affect non-boss enemies that don't utilize mana, which will feature most of the melee enemy combatants. During Reckless, these mobs will ignore 20% of armor with their attacks, which will be a bit of a scary affix for tanks that are not great at dealing with physical damage. But the enemy's armor at the same time with Reckless will also be reduced by 30%, which means that those enemies will take more physical damage, which is a huge boon for many melee classes. And those enemies will also take 10% increased arcane damage, which makes playstyles such as Boomkin and Arcane Mage in particular really good for those weeks. Another affix is Thorn, which also affects non-mana using enemies, so most melee enemies. Those enemies will now deal physical damage back to their attackers. So for melee classes, so melee classes will want to focus on caster enemies rather than physical enemies for that week. But this could also open opportunity for healers to flex the healing muscles to be able to heal the warriors and rogues as they continuously take damage from thorn. Thorned enemies will also take additional damage from holy and shadow damage, making classes such as priests, paladins, and warlocks a little bit stronger for those weeks. Another affix is called Attuned, which will only affect non-boss enemies that do use mana, so these are going to be caster enemies rather than melee enemies instead. Those caster enemies will inflict 20% increased magic damage, so certain classes such as Demon Hunters or Blood Death Knights that are better at taking magic damage will be a little bit stronger for those weeks. Attuned enemies will also take 10% increased nature damage from assassination rogues, for example, with their poisons, or from druids from the wrath based abilities. But also, those enemies will take 30% increased bleed damage, which makes bleed classes such as feral druids, assassination rogues, and even arm warriors extra strong for those weeks. The last affix will be focus, which also affects mana caster enemies. Those enemies will have 30% more haste, so their cast abilities and damage over time effects will be amplified which may make classes like Warlocks with Curse of Tongues a little bit stronger to help counteract the increased casting speeds. Enemies that are empowered with the focused affix will also take 10% increased frost and fire damage. So frost death knights, frost mages, fire mages, destro warlocks, anything that deals fire damage is going to gain much more benefit out of these. You will also have noticed that while talking about all these affixes, this entire time I've been on my Demon Hunter character. That is because Demon Hunters actually have a way to exploit 
every one of these affix changes. We talked about how all these enemies are getting a buff but also a debuff that being made weaker to certain specific mechanics where maybe mages will be good one week or warriors will be good another or hunters will be good the next week. At the end of the day I think no matter what class you are because demon hunter is actually a class that may end up being really good for every one of these weeks and I wonder if this blue post actually took demon hunters into account. You see this is because demon hunters deal a lot of damage as pure chaos damage. Not fire, not frost, not arcane, but chaos. Chaos is a type of spell damage that's actually an amalgamation of all damage types all at once. This includes arcane, fire, frost, nature, shadow, holy, but also physical as well. So potentially, while they're trying to make these affixes a little bit better for death knights, a little bit better for rogues, a little bit better for hunters, depending on the week, I think at the end of the day, they're basically securing demon hunters as a must-have spot as part of every single dungeon group going forward. Unless they adjust the way that Chaos works in the future, where it doesn't actually benefit all of these, but, but the basic version of Chaos is supposed to be an amalgamation of all of these elements and even physical combined together into one school of spell. So unless they specify how demon hunters function with all of these debuffs in the future, demon hunters are looking like they will have the most amount of benefit from all of these affixes by their own, so it may be a good idea to start leveling a demon hunter in preparation for War Within, just in case these affixes go through as they are. But besides that, I want to go back to the actual affixes themselves, as all these four affixes will be replacing the plus four affixes in that affix bucket. Certain affixes will become enabled for dungeons that are plus four and above in difficulty while other affixes become enabled at a plus seven difficulty and above so those new affixes attuned focus thorn and reckless will become enabled as part of the plus four difficulty and above these affixes will also be replacing affixes such as afflicted incorporeal entangling storming and volcanic which is a huge benefit and got so many in the wild community excited for all five of these affixes being retired for this first season of war within as for the plus seven affixes spiteful the one that spawns ghosties once enemies die is being retired for this first season and the only affixes that can be part of the plus seven pool are now raging which gives enemy foes cc immunity when they drop below a certain level bolstering which causes all enemies to gain a damage buff once one of their allies falls in battle bursting which causes enemies to erupt in a violent explosion that deals damage over time to the dungeon party as well as sanguine which means whenever enemies fall in battle they'll leave a puddle on the ground which will heal all enemies and will damage all players that stand within it so now we have a whole new array of plus four affixes, but also a different array of plus seven affixes with raging, bolstering, bursting and sanguine making their way into the next expansion, but a huge array of six original affixes being entirely gutted out of the very first season of War Within, which offers a very different mechanic of which classes end up excelling and being highlighted depending on the week, while also introducing again a kiss and a curse mechanic back into the mythic plus rotation system which is a very very exciting bit of news that does offer a bit of a hurdle for players to overcome but also benefits depending on which classes they bring and can even help highlight things like arcane mages during reckless weeks or feral druids during attune weeks for the bleed empowerment or frost and fire mages during focus weeks or even retribution paladins and shadow priests during weeks such as thorned that being said all of those affixes again like we mentioned before will apply only to certain enemies so caster enemies can be affected one week while melee combatants can be affected the next week and depending on how these affixes are tuned with some of the enemies and how they function there may be a little bit more room for how players will be able to counteract these affixes but with that being said i kind of want to pass this conversation off to you guys in the comments down below what are your thoughts on all these different affix changes coming for the first week of war within a reminder war within is still in the beta and they're looking for a ton of feedback from all players whether you're casual or whether you play mythic plus dungeons at the high end they want to hear how players are reacting to all of these changes which will hopefully be ready for testing sometime later this week over in the war within beta as for my personal opinions i really don't hate the idea of adding new affixes and retiring some of the ones that players didn't generally like generalizing these affixes between class types rather than specific classes and specific class mechanics i also think is not the worst idea 
I'm still concerned how this is going to work for Demon Hunters in particular, because they do sound like the class that will be able to get the most amount of value from all of these kiss and curse mechanics out of these affixes. But if all these mechanics are tuned correctly, this may offer an opportunity for healers, tanks, and a variety of different DPS classes to shine during specific weeks. It would mean that the meta is ever shifting and ever changing, where just about every single class spec in the game could adjust their talents to be a little bit stronger for one week or the next. If all of these affixes, both the negative effects and the positive effects, are tuned properly, this could give an opportunity for so many class specs to shine from week to week on end, and gives players even more reasons to adjust their builds and try different playstyles that they may not normally talent into, but now there's an affix that supports that very, very specific playstyle, which could help those classes shine within Mythic Plus dungeons. And I don't necessarily hate that type of change week on week on end. But like I said before, I want to hear what you guys think about all these in the comments down below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.